welcome back to Entrepreneur TV Middle East. We're here live at Jitex, giving you the latest stories and the most exclusive interviews. And with me right now is a very special guest at the EN to UAE stand, and that is Hamad Al Marzuki. He's the Senior Vice President of Pre Sales and Business Operations at EN to UAE. What a pleasure meeting you. Thank you. Thank you. Happy to be here. How's everything going? Uh, busy days? Amazing. So busy. I can imagine. I can yeah. imagine. So tell me a little bit about your participation here at Jitex. Uh, did it reach your expectations? Uh, definitely. I mean, Jitex is very important for us because it's a global platform. As you can see, many technology vendors are coming to showcase the latest use cases, mm -hmm. um, applications, technologies. And uh, we at E&D, we like to participate, to drive this conversation and also bridge the gap between the technology providers and our customers. Of course. And um, uh, one of our important themes for this year is basically the focus on end-to-end -end many services. We believe mm -hmm. it has a lot of value and we are showcasing it here uh, as part right. of our booth. Right, so tell me a little bit about those managed services. Well, managed services uh, is one of the key pillars in our strategy at mm -hmm. EAN. Uh, we believe it brings a lot of value to the enterprise environment. Uh, we found that with working with our customers that uh, operating uh, operations it brings a lot of overhead to customers because uh, enterprise customers have complex networks. Mm -hmm. So the idea here is to offload customers from operating these complex uh, infrastructure networks, allowing them to focus on their core business, doing innovation and digital transformation. Amazing. And, and what way do you actually place those pillars that you were talking about right now? Well. We focus on multiple pillars when we do this. The most important one is basically the enterprise capacity okay. and the availability of the people when they are needed. So we have invested a lot in the past few years building internal capabilities, which is the human capital, making sure that these experts are having deep technical knowledge and available at any point of time to manage uh, the complex networks. The second pillar is basically partnerships. We believe that partnerships are very, very important uh, because uh, technology vendors at the end of the day they are the ones who are providing the technology but we do it differently it's not about basically uh, doing contracts and signing contracts and MOUs with these technology providers we bring them we test their technologies make sure that they, they fit for the use cases of our customers and then train the human capital to be able that to make sure that our people internal experts are able to run and provide these networks amazing. to the customers. Amazing. So tell me, what are some future plans for, for managed services? What would you see as your future vision? Well, Is it to keep all of these right and then to add on? Definitely. See. Uh, without a doubt, the next big thing is AI. Everybody's talking about AI. And we are uh, driving uh, this uh, file very strong. We are, we are moving now with what we call AI Ops, which is basically AI for operations. Okay. And it's all, it's all about bringing the latest AI technologies, deep analytics, uh, machine learning uh, capabilities into the operations, making sure that these capabilities understand the operations and do a lot of automation. So imagine if we, if the customer is running the operations, we take over this operation, and then the AI will be fixing the issues when they happen, and sometimes even predict the issue before it happened. And this brings a lot of value to our customers from optimization, reliability, and security. Of course, and it's important that you said security in the end, because Definitely. I feel like control and security is something we're all afraid of when it comes to AI. So the fact that it's all kept under complete and full control is amazing. Now, one more question for you. What sort of advice, let's say, would you give to the younger generations um, that would like to enter the tech space and potentially you know, do the job you're doing one day? Definitely look at, first of all, do something interesting. If technology, you like technology, choose us an interesting topic and invest a lot of effort in it to try to understand it. And most importantly, try to understand what value it brings either to you or, for example, to your uh, customer. And take basically, take advantage of, of the of the revolution that's right. happening right now. Amazing. One last question for you. You have two of your cards. You have to take one card out and answer the question. It's a random. All right. Ask what's you your, the question. What's your question? How do you make decisions when you don't have all the answers? 
Hmm. So basically... Uh, it's interesting because you're in a senior position, so I think everybody could hear some advice on that. So usually I ask my team, because okay. I have a team of experts, and then I weigh all the options. Okay. And usually I'm a guy who likes to draw. I usually okay. go back to the, to the drawing board, ask <laughs> my team, put all the questions, and weigh the answers, and then take the decision. You like to visualize it on the board. Definitely. Beautiful. Definitely. Thank you so much for this Thank interview. You very much. We wish you the best of luck, and stay tuned, guys, to, to many more with E and UAE. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.